we taking it down, we build and destroy We build and we destroy Like children with their toys I'm not voting out of absolute exhaustion from the lies that has been going on for generations now Where we have a disenfranchised underclass that are not being represented by that political system So voting for it is tacit complicity with that system Here's your own judgment, that's all any of us can do There's been so much secrecy and disinformation over the last 50 years That it's become impossible to prove anything in the face of official denial No, 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 Of course, no, the flip side no, is no. nobody really believes anything the government says Stop, then bubblegum gon' pop, baby Cause this shit I spit is yuck Versus like them bodies that I'm stacking in the truck Son, I see the 60s, all my chickens better pluck Kids will get the people running crazy in a muck Homie, what the fuck, got me feeling stuck On the next level, bro, I'ma turn it up Half the butts are burning up, catch me on the streets trying to earn a buck Got my mind stuck in the cut, on a murder rut You ain't heard of us, you a liar plus a button burger love Serving up like a high rocket a block to a customer. Got them saying shucks, never get stuck in the mind, feeling like I gotta slip out of a rut. Girls hate on us, stunts wanna fuck. Girls hate on us, cause the stunts wanna fuck. Yes, yes, that's Z's right there. And we got him on the phone. What's good? Yeah, 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 it was popping, man. Just chilling out, you know. I uh, actually got my kid wilding out upstairs right now, trying to put her to bed. This is how it is. <laughs> Young three year old in the making, you know. <laughs> yeah, so keep you out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was good. Not much, man. Just chilling out, bumping mm-hmm. some of the some of the joints from you, of course. And yeah, I've been listening, been listening. Nice, nice. What up? Yeah, getting uh, getting excited to connect with you at the uh, the tech show. Uh, I know you got a few dates coming up with him. That should be good. Yes, sir. Doing uh, Toronto, Windsor, and Oshawa guaranteed, and I'm supposed to have a couple more dates. Just haven't locked down confirmation, so I don't want to mention yet. Word up! That's dope. Windsor, but Windsor yeah. is the spot, man. Windsor's a good good place to rock. I have actually never done a show at Windsor, so that'll be nice to do. I just did my first one a couple weekends ago, and I had a blast. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I, fuck it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I got to, uh, I, I got to, uh, yeah, definitely check that out. If you're coming out there, we'll have to uh, throw it out for sure. Yeah. I've really done a lot of cities, too. I've done a lot of cities in Ontario alone and in this country, but Windsor's one of the spots I haven't even touched yet for some reason. I know. It's a weird, it's a weird city. Like, being out there, they're saying the scene's just kind of... I don't know, it's just, it's a weird one. Like, they don't get all the the big shows that come through all the time, but when they do, they have, you know, pretty good turnouts and stuff, and a lot of people come up from across the border, so. That's what I was going to say. It's a border town, too, right? So you mm-hmm. get the U.S., and it's always popping when you get that. Yeah, so you no. got a little fronting, too, but that's just what happens. Yeah, yeah they got that, that crazy exchange rate. I bet you a bunch of people probably come up from the from the States because you can get more, more for your buck, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's just the way it is. Well, yeah, man. Just uh, trying to be playing Build and Destroy. Just yeah. Drop that album. Yes, yes. Talk I'm about working it. working right now. I don't want to say I'm working backwards because I'm always work- moving forwards, but, like, I don't always have the resources, funds, and allocations I want in life. And just bought myself a house, bought a new video camera and shit. Yeah, yeah, and, true. And poop. And uh, trying to start doing my own videos and stuff like that, facilitating my own movement from within, which I've always kind of done with the studio and everything like that, and I still do. That's that's how we do the music. So we got our own spot, you know, Nino Nickel. Always done this stuff with PJ and uh, kind of came... To be honest, this is my first solo interview that I've done on my own because I've always done everything with either Nino Nickel or PJ, one or the other. So, like, you know, I'm branching out on my own for a bit now. I haven't got into all the uh, resources and uh, media outlets that I could. So this is a good step. And uh, I'm almost done recording my next mixtape right now. And it's going to be, well, in my eyes, it's going to be crazy because it's not me really going off my fast tip, going off on this and that. It's just me spitting my heart out for like 60. I, I don't even count the bars. I just wrote for like 60 bars, 70 bars. You hear an 80 bar track. And I have, some of them have hooks. Some of them just, I spit like a four bar hook at the end of 80 bars and that's it. And it's just like me picking beats that I thought were rugged in the industry and just going off on them like an animal. I don't even have a name for it yet. The folder is just called Bars, the mixtape. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to call it that, but... Bars. Yeah, it, it's going to be done real soon. I got like 12 tracks recorded, so I'm going to uh, record... I got two written, 
and I want to write maybe two or three more. So it's going to be like 16, 17 joints. Nice, so, nice. Yeah, it's going to be. I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, I got the camera now, and you know how mixtape stuff is. It doesn't have to be as complex. So I'll probably shoot maybe even upwards to eight to ten videos for that, just because it's location spits uh, shots and stuff like that. So it's simple. But back to what I was saying, we're working backwards. Now I got this camera and stuff. I'm starting to shoot, like you said, the video for Build and Destroy. It's going to be the first one I'm going to do. Nice. I'm going to do a few more. And I might, don't quote me on this, but uh, re-release Build and Destroy at the beginning of next year if I have two or three more videos to pop off for because, you know, that's the right way to do things. And that's why I said it's a little bit backwards, but at the same time, if you're making moves and making progress with yourself, it's everything's good. So I ain't hating on myself. <laughs> no, 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 but that, it's so true, though, bro. I know what you mean. Sometimes you drop a project, and you're just like, just because you, you've got it done and you want to get it out there. Just like, didn't even, feel the even, right you time. Know, you don't really promote it. You mm -hmm. don't have anything but the album. Like, you know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Yeah, no yeah, no yeah. videos stocked up, nothing like that. It's so it's so hard. And, like, I remember even this the album that I'm about to release now, like, it was set to release a year ago. On, on yeah, that I, bet date. You, I, I bet you it was, man. I know exactly how that works, and that's that's part of the reason why you push it out. You're like, okay, it's already been a year. I can't wait any longer. I got to get this out. Seems like I'm doing nothing with myself. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and yeah. I still, I still feel like I'm not ready. Music is what uh, is your explanation for how your life is going, for why things are working the way they are. But if people aren't hearing your music, they don't know that you had a kid or you're in some tough times or you just did some stuff that has you down and out to be able to resource to music but life is going good on the other end but you know what i mean it's, it's about because i work a nine to five i gotta yeah. grind my ass off for my kid i just bought a house like i said so i mean life is real and at the same time trying to balance all this it's you know it's not a game but yeah I'll always do it for the rest of my life, man. I'll rhyme till I die. That's what I always said. I might not play the game till I die, but I'll rhyme till I die just because that's what it is. I grew up as a kid doing this, and love is love. Just like I love my sports, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do yeah, love yeah. your sports. <laughs> I see you're a huge Toronto fan. doesn't matter I what the team is. I'm mute in the background right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting their ass kicked, unfortunately. But Oh, well, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah, it's rare these days, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. The Jays are killing it, though. Yeah, they are, man. It's actually crazy right now. Yeah. It's one of those things where you see so many people jump on and you're like, okay, we can uh, slap hands and pretend we've been doing this forever, but my heart bleeds with this crap. Hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I ain't hating. It's all good. It's it's good to see the city just come out and it's it's popping, man, based on one, like, unity as opposed to uh, segregation and degradation. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. That's so dope. yeah, I don't know what's good, man. Sports, man, sports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. But oh, to be honest with you, football starts tomorrow. Oh. And that actually funny thing. Let me tell you everything I got going on right now. That's how busy I am. Right now. <laughs> My kid just ran downstairs like two seconds before this phone call. I had to put her PJs back on and tell her to stay in her room. So I heard her crying for a second. So I'm gonna have to go check on her right after this. I got food I was cooking on the stove at the same time that I just stopped. I got the Blue Jays game in the background. I got my laptop sitting on the table in front of the Blue Jays game, auto-drafting my fourth fantasy team right now because I cannot be doing this draft while I'm taking this interview. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, the grind and struggle right is real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. my first two picks. Jeremy Hill from my team, the Bengals. You know what it is. And, uh... Demarius Thomas, wide receiver from Denver, so it's a good start, but I'll nice. have to see where I went from there. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, uh, you got a release date in mind for the new tape, or is it like... Well, to be honest, it's just like Robbie said, if I gave you a release date right now, I'd be lying to you without wanting to. And no, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I literally, to be completely honest, I wanted to drop this tape for the beginning of the summer, like July. So ah, that not setting a release date was already a good move right there. Yeah, I yeah. That, but as long as this is out, like in a manner that I'm happy with, and I start shooting a few videos to keep going. Like I don't want to release it like build and destroy. I want it to be, but I'm trying to have this recorded in like two weeks from now. Then we're gonna do the mixing process, which will take another couple weeks, not too long. And um, 
then artwork I can get done in the mixing process and all that. So, and it's only a mixtape. We don't have to go too crazy with any of that. Yeah. So a month realistically to have that wrapped up, but I would like to have at least a couple videos in motion, maybe one shot, something like that. But like I said, I got the camera and I'm working on that. So to be fair, two months and you're going to get a real, like probably the most complete project, although it is a mixtape over industry beats. You, you're going to hear from me in a long time because I'm going to have stuff to back it up. I'm going to have visuals, you know, stuff, better stuff to promote pretty much because, you know, these days, true fans, we can all listen to records and love them for what they are because realistically, I don't need videos. They kind of ruin the goodness. Exactly. And, like, I feel but like newer fans need that visual. Sorry, bro. I didn't mean to cut you off. But, yeah, the general population does not give a crap about music. <laughs> like, I mean, they do, but they just want to move. It's yeah. Take their body. That's all it is. It's not really. I don't care what you have to say. And you know, and Robbie, I know what you and V, I know what you starting out in this game and stuff like that. You guys try to talk about real stuff that pertains to your life, not not about like I. It's not that I hate new music, it's that I hate the new mentality of hip hop, where it's like hip hop is an escape to just throw your money around, act ignorant, and be a piece of crap reflection of society and the way your parents raised you. When at the end of the day, I want to do stuff that makes my parents look good. I want to do stuff that produces better opportunities for the people that I love and hopefully society itself in the end and stuff like that. Where I think that's the hip-hop we came from. And it's not that we didn't come up from messed up upbringings and we did messed up crap because I've done a hell of a lot. And I probably still might sometimes, some days, because stuff happens, like I've said many times, but that's never the intention. The intention is always goodness, and we're always looking out for people. And it's like, I actually had KRS-One one time when we picked him up downtown. We spent a full day with him. We did this a few times back in the day. But he came to my house, and it was kind of random because we're in the room, one room recording. I come out. He's standing there. There's like four of my boys sitting in a semicircle, and he's just like schooling them. And like everyone, his boys call him teacher, so it was just kind of funny. He was literally teaching the students. <laughs> but he's just one of those dudes that comes from exactly what we're talking about. And if people don't, that's another thing, the problem with modern day hip hop. Some people don't even know who KRS One is. Yeah. You can't be into hip hop and not know who the legends that created the movement are. You don't have to know their music. You don't have to recite their words to me. You have to know who they are. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Nobody listens to rock and doesn't know the Beatles. Like, yeah. You know I mean? And it goes way deeper than that. I know a lot more about rock because there's lots of plagiarism and all that stuff, even from bands that we thought started it all. Because black <laughs> people started rock music, but I remember when Kanye West did that song with Paul McCartney or whatever, yeah, and everyone yeah, was yeah. just oh, like, buddy, that everyone was, was like, "Wow, how you, <laughs> Kanye is West is making this guy so famous? He's yeah. so lucky yeah. to do a song Kanye with Kanye. Is such a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's making some old man famous. Like, yeah, oh yeah. My God, the disrespect of in in the ignorance." <laughs> <laughs> like, it's and, so like, funny. the exact same situation happened with, um, I can't remember who it was that brought her out on stage, but Missy Elliott went through, like, the same exact thing, like, where everyone on Twitter was like, who's Missy Elliott? Like, she's about to be famous oh, on yeah. this stage. Yeah, you know what? I missed that, I but I remember that. hearing the backlash about it. I missed See, it, like, live type thing, but yeah, I, I actually do remember that, because I remember someone telling me Missy came out, and I was like, what? Missy came out? can't believe I missed that. And then they're like, yeah. And, and then you see all the backlash and you're like, what is wrong with people? Exactly. And the crazy thing about it now is like thinking back on it, I can't even remember who brought her out. I just remember her being brought out. I know. So who did like, it? Who did that? I, yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so curious. Yeah. And like, I didn't, I didn't even see, like I said, but another thing that I this definitely, it was, it was, rec it was within the past year. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. It was really, yeah. really recent. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, and it, like it's crazy how like the and younger generation like, has no it, idea. It angers me at times. I, I can't even hate because that's just it, the world we live in is a world that like is about fad fashions and like you know people want to jump on things that are popular and that's about being real. Like in back in the day, the term being real used to think about being hard. Like if you don't carry a gun, you're not real, which was the most biggest misconception I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, like, yeah. Being real is if if you're gay, be gay. That's being real. Yeah. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's just be true to you. And a lot of people, that's the problem with these fads and fashions. because, And it all happens to us when we're teenagers and stuff like that, which is a lot of the market and everything, that people want to jump on what's popular. So if something gets popular in some way, form or fashion, 
it's just going to be listened to. And then you could ask someone, well, why do you really like that? And it's like, because I like it. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, there's not, no actual, when, there's no depth behind it. When, like, I listen to music these days, there is the odd, clappy track that I like. Very odd. And I can't even think of one right now, so good thing I can't air myself out on it. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, it happens from time to time. You're like, yeah, I don't mind this track in a, it's like, well, I was going to say in a club, but I mean, like, been in a club unless I perform in, like, five years. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, but, you know I mean? <laughs> even for, like, those trappy, like, stuff that we all like, because, like, I'll admit, I there's a few of those tracks that I do like, too. But I feel like it's because it's played on the air or on the radio, like, five times a day. Like well, you hear it in the car, you hear it. Well, the facilitator of everything. Because I've always truly believed in, like, this comes from having, you got to believe in yourself with some talent. Whether people believe that you deserve to be on mainstream radio or not, blah, blah, blah. And I don't really think I'm a mainstream artist anyway, so it's not about that. But from a perspective of, there are so many talented artists that deserve, in my eyes, to be on the radio, regardless of anything to do with me or my camp. I'm just talking about, like, you know, anybody, and Robbie, you're actually way more of a mainstream artist for me in the perspective of you don't swear as much. <laughs> you, you know, you keep it real. You do dope tracks, but you do softer, harder. You, you have more of a range than me with your music. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. in that perspective, it's like all you need is a facilitator. If there's someone willing to, it's not even believe in you. It's just the guy that's there to put you on. Because if you get put on and they're like, Listen, we're not going to play you once. We're going to play you five times a day for 25 days. And yeah. after that, if you don't get put on, it's your fault. And that never really happens because everything catches five times a day after 25 days. Exactly. Like, I, I, ra I just ra got off like raising my Like I'm still raising her, but I mean raising a baby. And they, one of the lessons they teach you like with food and stuff like that is do something 13 times before you stop it. Because after 13, it becomes a habit and it's locked in the brain and you just get used to it. So it's like with that training right there with babies, what does that tell you about human beings? With You know, if you just drill it, it's, it's clockwork orange, man. Mm. So I don't know. It's just repetition. You know what I mean? You know what I'm coming with. Play, yeah, play that track. Well, you play it, you know, t 13 times, and then it's stuck in your head. You're going to need to listen to it later. You'll be like, exactly. And it'll just come into your head randomly. Do you know, that's one of the things that, like, it pisses me off when that happens. When I get a really bad, catchy, <laughs> poppy radio yeah. song stuck in my head, and it's going, I'm like, how did you get in here? Yeah. I'm like, Funny. you need to leave now. Talk to, like, my work employees. The only songs I think, and I'm one of those guys that just walks around singing shit in a terrible voice. The only songs, and sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but <laughs> uh, the only songs I literally sing are like the worst songs in the world, and they're like not even anything to do with hip hop or R and B. Usually, they're like '80s tracks or like, <laughs> like I'm telling you, man, terrible music. That people are looking at me like, why is that in your head right now? Like, <laughs> don't know. Please put something on to get it out. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I don't yeah. even know. Yeah, and it's the crazy. 9 to 5 grind is uh, to you, man. I like, you know what I'm kind of getting myself back on right now, and I say back on because I don't know if you got to be, as, at least in my age group, which I was born in 83, so you can do the math. They used to play uh, Looney Tunes cartoons all the time with music videos, and the music videos were always Motown. And, there, and I listened to tons of Motown through that, and it's almost like I was brainwashed again, but I loved it. And then I came back recently, and I'm like, what was that music I used to listen to with the Looney Tunes when I was a kid? <laughs> and I started hearing a couple tracks, and I'm like, yo, I love it. And they're like, yo, this is Motown, bro. And I'm like... Yo, I love Motown! <laughs> <laughs> I went and downloaded a bunch of Motown, and I'm just bumping Motown, singing like, you know? Aretha <laughs> <Lisa> Franklin. <laughs> uh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. Gets embedded in your head, man. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. it's dope. You know, Motown's actually some uh, wicked-ass music. Like, here's one I was listening to yesterday. Not that I want to sing it, but that. Sherry! Sherry, baby! Sherry, baby. <laughs> 
<laughs> Won't you come out tonight? That's just dope. <laughs> I told my boy, I'm like, yo, we should have got like a five man sweater band in high school and just acapella this crap. That works. But that yeah, works. Man. But yeah, so this, uh, I pull up the article here. It was Missy Elliott steals Super Bowl halftime show from Katy Perry. That's what it was in, oh, in, yeah, in yeah, February. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, February. and talking about this uh, made me think about something more recent that just happened with Macklemore at uh, I think it was the the big thing that just happened VMAs MTV VMAs? yeah MTV Video Music Awards or whatever. I don't even know know this. Yeah, Macklemore brought out a bunch of like uh, old school veterans, yeah. veteran artists, and then he got like he's got he got he's so much old. backlash from all these these people in the industry, like mad at him for bringing all these people out, and then like people such as I think it was um, Big Daddy Kane tweeted Mel. tweeted out the other day something like uh, you know everybody's got a problem with Macklemore, but like I don't see any of these top forty rappers. Yeah doing anything for respecting the culture and the people who started this and like named off like a couple of the artists that were like well, brought so out he on just, stage like, brought them out like in a respectful tip and, yeah like, yeah as part of his set yeah. yeah 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 that doesn't I don't, I don't understand that well, yeah like I didn't understand why he got back like well, People people thought of it as like a gimmick, like oh he's trying to like do. He's that. reaching for fans or whatever. Yeah, but like, yeah. Kane does well, have you a. You know what? In this day and age, everything is a gimmick and it's not at the same time. It's because doesn't. It's just like speculation of anything. Everyone's always going to have their opinion, and you can't tell someone different. So, to someone, they're gonna a bunch of people probably are gonna like him more because of that, and that makes it a gimmick to them. But in reality, it's not a gimmick because he was just doing what he was like. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was a genuine it act. It is to the to the uh, beholder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That's, uh, that's ridiculous, though. Like, take your fight. Yeah. Exactly. And like. If he's paying homage, I, I don't understand the backlash at all, to be quite no, honest. That's like, absolutely ridiculous. Probably because it was actually successful and a lot of people, you know, generally liked it. Yeah, yeah. I um, I think it was Styles P actually brought that up in 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 an in interview with uh, DJ Vlad. Uh, really? I think this was like a while ago. How uh, he was talking about Macklemore bringing uh. Talib Kweli yeah, on tour. Talib Kweli, I remember that. Yeah, and he was like, well, you don't see any of the big, big, like, rappers ever doing that. Like, they always want a headline. They always want to be, like, that person. Whereas Macklemore yeah. will bring out, like, the biggest, like, any hip-hop head will know the yeah. names he's bringing out. And it's like, why are you, why are you bashing him for that? Yeah, really, he's trying to put people, like, above him. Yeah. When he's on a level. That's, that's... Like, as humble as it gets. Yeah, exactly. And when it comes to this game, like, I respect nothing more than humility, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's insane to me. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. But then this, again, this generation. these days is really high school, so. Yeah, this Whether generation. Work life, and, uh, you know, uh, friends life, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Stuff gets high school in two seconds, so. <laughs> yeah. I wonder yeah, what that yeah, is. Hip hop is high school half the time too, so OGs aren't. But yeah, and just gotta learn how to navigate it, I guess. No, I was I was wanting some old Ice Cube the other day. Uh, like old school, and there'll be a way Ice Cube because you know that movie brought that all back out. But yeah, have you seen the movie? Man. Did you go see the movie? No, I downloaded it, bro. <laughs> 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 they, they only made it. 53 million at the box office in the first week or something. Yeah, so. they, they could spare yeah, they were okay. a few. They didn't need me. Yeah, yeah, they could spare a few downloads. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's dope though. Good movie. Yeah. How um how do you feel about the fans just catching on to NWA now? I just I, it's one of those like it, in a way it makes me feel like I'm old, even though I know I'm not really old, but. It's like, it makes me laugh, and I don't want to be disrespectful, because I'm like, it's one of those things, going back to what we said, like, if you get into something, you have to at least know your background knowledge of yeah. certain things to, you know, mm -hmm. like you, 
if you didn't know who NWA was, then I'm sorry, you're retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if well, it's like, <laughs> if you didn't know their story, that's completely fine. Like most of us, there's a couple things I learned from the movie. I'm not gonna lie, but like most of us knew. We grew up, like, I remember literally, and I wish I could find pictures, but I have pictures back in the day when I was, like, 16 years old rocking a Compton hat because my boy <laughs> literally has been to Cali before and stopped in Compton and bought a hat when we were mad young. So it was like, you know, we were grew up on NWA. We listened to Mad Easy E when we were younger. Um, yeah, just, so it's one of those, like, if you didn't listen to that, that's fine because, you know, we're all different age groups and not everyone for realistically for this day and age, if you're like 18 to 20 years old, that's kind of oldies of hip hop right now. And that's okay. And I grew up listening to some oldies of, you know, hip hop, rock, this and that. So, but it takes time to discover things that way. But yeah. when stuff pops off in your era, it does not take time. You're just either blind to the facts or you see what's going on, right? Yeah, yeah, like, I, like, there's, like, I don't know, I see it on Facebook all the time, all of a sudden, like, the NWA movie brought out, like, a whole, or oh, created, straight out like, of. yeah, like, that, yeah, that whole <laughs> meme thing, and it's like, man, this is corny, like, you couldn't just let the movie live? Like, the movie's no, exactly. already that's, getting that's huge what I press That's one thing where I laugh, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful at the same time, but it's just like, ah, uh, like... This is this movie is good homage, and at the same time, it kind of became a. Uh, it became like a gimmick for people to run. Yeah, with. exactly. And you know what? I was even saying while watching it, I'm like, they are going to sell so many more records now. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I brought it up on the air. Uh, I think it was last week. NWA actually charted on the top forties for the first time in their like existence, like a couple months ago or something. Really? Just based off that movie. Yeah, just based off that movie. See, in a way, it did become a gimmick. And yeah, you know, exactly. People making it knew that. But at the same time, the people, and I say people making it like film companies and stuff, but yeah, people yeah. making it like writers and stuff just wanted to put out a movie on a, like a story about, you know, exactly. a way and how yeah. they actually grew up. Because there's a lot of misconceptions about everything. And I don't know if, I mean, I had this, not argument, but convert, I guess, disagreement work to an agreement with someone about how i'm glad they put um well first of all i hope everyone knew easy died of aids but if some people learned from that then they probably didn't even know who easy was yeah. but they put when he was dying at the end one of the guys walks in with a bone post tape and he's like yo e and kind of like i can't remember how it exactly went down but he like put it down it didn't really become a topic of interest anymore but it was there because Eazy was the person that discovered the bone thugs, yeah. and apparently, like he left messages on their phone, spitting for hours and stuff like that. And he was blown away by their talent, and he was the one that mainly put them on, but died before they blew up and stuff like that. So, so you know, there was little things that he, people like, like I hope people from my generation would have known. But at the same time, it was nice to see them and how they were laid out in the movie, and you know, like staying true to things without really getting in too much detail at them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, yeah. How, how do you feel about all these people all of a sudden, like, coming up with, like, interviews? Like, um, Dre's, I think, ex-girlfriend or something had an interview recently, like, revolving around the movie. And, like, there's a whole bunch of people that came from, like, that era or, like, were around for all of that are yeah. starting to come out and do interviews now. Like, have you seen any of them or... No, I haven't actually. Yeah, I um, that. DJ Yella did one actually. Uh, I just watched a clip of it today where uh, he was talking about uh, stuff that I didn't know about uh, between NWA and Ice Cube when he first left. The whole uh, like, I, I guess they didn't actually talk about Ice Cube at all. No, not really. Yeah. So it's like, so where did the whole beef come from? Like, it has to spark somewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. I mean, that, that is actually true, because that whole part was kind of just a, uh, it was kind of the climax of the movie in a way, but it's funny because it was just kind of sped through at the same time, right? Like, they showed a track, a or a line from a track, a track, another track back, and it was kind of like, just sped through this whole thing, but... It, it, at the end of it, you're like, "What the hell actually happened with this?" Exactly. They didn't explain and nothing like that. There was no personal personal things between relationships, other than 
Ice Cube hating on that Paul Giamatti character, whatever his name was. Yeah, and it was like it was one of the biggest moments in hip hop in my mind. NWA and Ice Cube's beef, but it doesn't like it doesn't get brought up anymore. Like him and Dre are cool now, which is good. So like, I don't know. Like I learned a lot from the G, uh, the Yellow interview with uh, DJ Vlad. So. Oh, in in like the reality of music and in real life, that never gets brought up. Yeah. Like I, that never like, gets brought up at all. Sorry, I didn't know that's what you were talking about. Yeah, that that's kind of a lost fact, and I I think that all comes around the fact that first of all they did somewhat make up because they were supposed to drop a reunion album. If that was actually true or not, but anyway, I, actually, yeah, to, I think Cube did address that. He said uh, he said he was waiting on Dre for beats or something, and the album just never came out. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was in the process, and that was when E was dying of cancer. And yeah. It just became a problem. It didn't happen. But at the end of the day, he ended up dying while they kind of reconciled. So I think because of that, it was just, it, it's almost like it's a respect to E at the same time. Like, why talk about a beef of a guy that was squashed and the guy's dead now? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Mate, that's just my best perception of it, because you're actually completely right. Of all beats that you hear about, you never hear about that. And that's probably one of the first major beats in hip-hop. Yeah. Probably the, the most pinnacle beginning beef because it was real. With some people that were certified gangsters to the public. Yeah. And, like, stuff could have popped off, and it never did. I don't know, like, I don't know how they showed it in the movie because, like, I haven't seen it. But, um... Oh, you haven't even seen it, eh? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Do you, actually, here's another question. Do it's, you feel the, the movie... movie is, it's, it's good, but it's, it, it speeds through it, like I said. It's yeah? more about the music than anything else, but yeah. Uh, do you feel the movie came out at a right time? Like, for... Uh, well, I don't know. What is the right time? <laughs> Fair enough. Because, like, the there are, like, they're yeah, already... Like, I, it's, it's long, like, it's... It's a long, what is it, uh, was it 89, so they're like... 87 almost, or something like that, 88? Yeah, it was something like that. So, I mean, you're, you're looking at almost 30 years. So, from that perspective, it's a long way separated from it, so it's not a bad time. And I, other than that, like I said, what, what really is a good time to do it? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to, it's gr it's great timing when it comes to uh, Ice Cube and Dre and all the members, Yella and, you know, everybody's still alive, Ren, because first of all, Yella and Ren, I don't really know if they're doing anything right now. Like, not saying they're not successful or doing well with their life, but at least this might put their recognition back on the map of who they are and what they did. And because, I mean, Ren, you see through the movie how much of a big role he has you and how, cool. like, I actually really like Ren. Oh. And always did, but he's really like Ren did all the writing when Cube left, and it was Cube and Ren that were the writers for NWA when he was there. Mm -hmm. So Ren is actually one of the major working talents, and only things responsible for NWA as well. Cube was huge, but Ren is like I said. So without the movie, a lot of people wouldn't have learned that fact, and that's I think that's glorifying to these guys, and that's a good thing because they're old men now. You know. Yeah. What I mean? Like, and Ice Cube's doing great for himself. Like, I had this picture in my office. It was funny. It was like one of those, uh, first I was like, and then I was like, and the first I was like was him, like, back in, you know, maybe 1990, 1988, whatever, uh, with a bandana around his head holding an AK on a couch. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then but then I was like, was him with a fishing rod, and uh, are we there yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? As funny as that is, good for him because the reality of it he is, he made it out, he's making mad money in the most legitimate way. Exactly, and he has a great life. How can you knock that? Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you can't take the G out of the G, man. Ice Cube's G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ice Cube, Ice Cube always gave me like watching him in like interviews and like movies and stuff. You kind of just get like that vibe from him. Like if you rub him the wrong way, he might actually hit you. Yeah, no, I know, trust me. And actually, a uh, point that I just thought of when talking about Cube, when I was watching the movie, there was thing that was one point that kind of rocked me, like, not in a way that I never knew, but in a way that I never realized, looking at it from a different age. When I was, like, eight years old, I remember getting my dad to rent Boys in the Hood, taking it home. I remember sitting on the couch and watching that whole movie with my mom and dad beside me. <laughs> I remember my mom being like, what the hell are you renting for? 
this guy fucking my life. Oh, <laughs> you know, and my dad's like, I don't know, he picked it out. <laughs> yeah, this is sick. <laughs> right? So I'm watching that, and I like, you knew Ice Cube was in it, but you don't really know who Ice Cube is when you're an eight-year-old kid. Yeah. You don't know he's this guy from NWA, you know, writing their music, doing all this stuff. When I grew up, like, maybe 17 years old is when I got put onto that stuff. And then... That's not what I got put onto hip hop, but I probably started listening to NWA 16, 17 years old. I, literally, the first people I started listening to was Gravediggers, which is funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you so later uh, looking at that, like you know, I uh, learned who NWA is, and I completely forgot about the fact that Boys in the Hood was Ice Cube, and you don't look at it like that. So when you watch the movie, it shows you like the parts that he well, not the parts, but it shows you how he played a major part in uh, Boys in the Hood, and, and as soon as they say it, you remember him, you remember his role, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm afraid I remember Cube. Yeah. And I was actually like, I gotta rent that movie, and wa- or, you know, download <laughs> <laughs> that movie and watch it again, or something like that, because, uh, dope. But, um, run, Ricky, run. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you see him in that, and you realize how major that was back then for a guy from Compton, you know, looked at as a gangbanger, doing, they got arrested for uh, dropping F the police, Mm-hmm. In a track like kind of like if you ever seen a CB4 with sweat from my balls, kind of like it's kind of a mimic of that. But well, that was a mimic of NWA, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so you when you look at all that, like it made me, it kind of humbled me to realize, like wow, like this when this guy was actually doing it. When I, it kind of, I, I, I'm one of those guys that puts myself in other people's shoes. So when I reflected, I t- kind of reflected back on myself for a moment and was like, wow, like. As an eight-year-old kid, I'm watching this guy, and I didn't really realize the power behind exactly what was going on. It was just a guy playing a role in a movie named Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. But really, it was so much more. Like, that's, that's crazy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That was one big realization from the movie that I never really had before. Yeah, and like it's crazy to see how far Ice Cube has gone as, like, not just a rapper, but, like, as an actor, as, like... He's crazy. He's no, out he is. everywhere. No, he's human being, man. He's, I got enough respect for Ice Cube. Like, mm-hmm. literally, he's probably one of my favorite. I don't really like people. I mean, I don't really like... <laughs> that was the worst thing to say. I don't <laughs> I really like, like rappers if I don't like them as people. Like, I'm not one yes. of those guys beats his wife and, you know, has 18 illegitimate children, but he raps great. Awesome. I, I can't get into that. Like, you know what I mean? Now that I got a kid of my own and everything... Who's actually came downstairs and is standing beside me? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just one of those things where, like, I can't. Like I said, I just can't get into that. I can't. I can't feel your vibe. Like that. That shit ain't cool with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So basically, with uh, Cube, I look at that. I love the fact that he was OG, and I love the fact that he, uh, so that he is OG, and that he was just straight G back in the day. And now he can come into a. That is the realest crap when it when you can come into a humble ending or new beginning let's say mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a better way to put it humble new beginning but still keep your old self and like respect everything not lost the guy can still rap the guy can still do- <laughs> that's a w baby yeah so i mean like when it comes to ice cube he's probably one of my most respected human beings that is also an artist because i don't like to just call people rappers it's to me it's underselling people for what they do Mm -hmm. you know what i mean with so much more than that well at least some of us are (laughs) (laughs) artists you know that's that's the problem with the game these days with uh seven thousand people coming out as a rapper if you're only going to make it as an artist yeah or a poet like i you know we all write poetry in our own way too, so <laughs> our words are wisdom. Hip-hop. In one way or another, with a lot of f bombs in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Like realistically, there's not too many. I'm not one of those people that like overly. Like I toured with Busta Rhymes. I toured with Tech Nine. We toured with Naughty by Nature. Two with D12, Classified, um, Joe Budden, Royce the Five Nine. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And all that, like, you know, we got good with a lot of them. Not Buster Rhymes, he, he was unapproachable. But <laughs> started chill with a bit. Um, like, Royce and all that, we were really good with. Like, if he came around, we could slap hands with Royce. He's good. His brother Vicious, I smoked mad blunts with and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> a lot of cool guys that get down because 
I, we are not the people that, and I don't want to say care about you in a way that like we're disrespectful and we want you to be hurt or ill. That is not the way I mean it. I mean it in a way of uh, when we are out doing work, we are there to do work and we are working on bettering our lives in the process. So when you're trying to better your life, you can't sit there. You can be respectful and you can get like my, my fact is I don't ride people's jocks at all and in the end they come to you and they slap your hand they show you respect and then you end up chilling with them on a humble tip and getting good humble advice and we got a lot of good humble advice from like artists like naughty by nature told us it's a tea baby <laughs> um i remember naughty by nature the one thing they told us to like you guys go out there and you put on a proper show and you do everything right but you have nothing showing who you are so other than when you drop your name at the very beginning, and you know what? To be honest, it's funny that I'm telling you this right now because it's the advice I need to tell myself because I'm doing it again right now. But you, you got it. He goes, how do people know Batman's coming? There's exact words. And we're like, what do you mean? He put, they put his logo in the sky. He's like, exactly. His logo in the sky. He's like, where's your goddamn logo? And it was like one of those things like if you don't have signage up on that stage, it's like get a big ass banner with your name. So every word you say has your name screaming below, behind, above it, like in some way, in some form or fashion, because the people will not forget that banner. By the it's like one of those brainwash tactics like we talked talked about, you know what I mean? Oh, and, so true. And oh. that was one of those things that and like I said, I'm not even doing that right now, so I'm glad we had this conversation so I could re-educate myself. <laughs> Dropping gems. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, like, there was so many things. Uh, Royce and them was just really cool. We kicked it. Buttons is what, uh, you know, I wasn't, I'm not really a big fan of Buttons, to be honest with you, but I'm just talking about as a person. <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> but, what it uh, is. Don't tell him I said that. Honestly, <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> Joe, Joe, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, poop. Yeah, like, you see him, like, you see him in public, you see, like, you read all the posts about Joe Budden, like, he's, he, he seems very unapproachable, I'm yeah, not gonna he's lie. Just definitely he was, he, no, he was, like, clowning, but he's just, he's one of those guys that's just clowning people, and they're like, shut up, Joe. And like, <laughs> yeah. Like bald head, you look like a penis. And like, <laughs> yeah. You know, to the manager and stuff, and they're like, yo, who the hell are you, Joe? And, like, you know, just, they'll get, but they're all friends getting at each other's, but you can tell he was, like, that, the rag of the clique, like, ragging everybody else. Yeah, him. yeah. And they're all like, yo, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> the comedic center. So that was whatever. That was, like, that's not that bad. It was kind of funny at the same time. Yeah. But, um, the, the one thing that, like, kind of rubbed me the wrong way, we were in a VIP, and I think it was Saskatoon, and this guy is like, yo, like, does a little, like, shuffle with his hands, like, move out of the way, move back, to, like, you know, there's a crowd of people standing there, so they'll kind of move out of the way, takes his shirt off, there's a couple girls standing beside him, too, sorry, but he doesn't tell them to move out of the way, takes his shirt off, gets down on the ground and starts doing push-ups in the VIP during a show, and I'm just like, that's the gayest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 but you know, to each their own. <laughs> oh man! But anyway, yeah, like that. That was you know that was some next stuff. <laughs> <laughs> next level. That's funny. I've never seen anything like that. I smoked. But then again, a, I smoked honestly, a joint with that show, I, damn. I started uh, getting a little reckless with a girl in the VIP and got pulled in what they like to call homie court the next day. <laughs> like, <laughs> Bro, we're taking you to homie court. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. The homie court. And they uh, weren't feeling uh, tobacco in our <laughs> green stuff. Uh, I remember Bud, Bud told me one time, he's like, homie, you need Dr. Phil. <laughs> Nobody puts tobacco in their green. <laughs> I'm like, this guy has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot in Canada. AV's all about that yeah, life. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm totally straight green. Straight green with it. Well, uh, classified. Because when we went in their room, they, they're like half a cigarette. And yeah. like each, you know, thing. They were all... Jesus. So, yeah. Like, they were, I was like, yo, this is nasty, bro. Like, <laughs> a little tip, you know what I mean? A little sprinkle on top. That little bit, you know. Yeah, but I was just like, wow, you guys are serious with this. 
Yeah, it depends where you are. East Coast is it's big on it. It's got to be a Canadian thing, though. I, well, I don't know. No, no. Dude, in Europe, it was crazy. Like, even in, in Amsterdam, like, a lot of the joints that you can, you buy pre-rolled joints that are, like, half tobacco, half half weed. And, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. And so many of the smokers out there are, smoke, like, tobacco with their weed. Like, I would say 8 out of 10 of the smokers that I ran into smoked tobacco with their weed. Oh damn! I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's like that. I I don't think it's just in Canada because like, and even different parts of Canada are different. Like that, that's more prevalent. I find on the East Coast when you go over there, a lot more people are smoking tobacco with their weed. And then when you come into Ontario and even West Coast, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. But maybe so that's wait, just I did me. another process of elimination and figured it out. It's us wacky white people. <laughs> oh wait, are you doing it too, V? I do it too. I do it too. Oh, never mind. That's out the window. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how many Asians are over there smoking tobacco with their weed. Well, let's debunk that real quick. <laughs> Take a trip. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Have you heard about moon rocks? No, I don't think so. It's corrupt. You know, corrupt from Dog Pound, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we did a few shows with him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he's got this new thing that he's like, I don't know, endorsing or he helped create it with another person, but it's like a really powerful strain that's dipped in hash oil and then uh, and then covered in keef like straight crystal. Really? Yeah, and it just yeah. Lo- it looks next level, bro. Just Google called? Google Moon Rocks weed sometime. So you got to like pipe it or something, bong it or However, like, no, you can break you, up or something. Yeah, you could probably roll it into into a J two F. But like, can you imagine how sticky insane. that would be? And the THC content is like through the roof. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. No, I never tried that. I'm a bong man myself. Me too. Same. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't mind everything else though. Lots of joints. No, really. Well, yeah. Actually, you know, I'm not a big fan of papers. To be honest with you, but not the white, not the white type of papers. You bet the I don't know why. It's just one of those things where I drink and smoke. I get a little tipsy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Not a good combination sometimes. <laughs> and with papers, I like smell it, and it just nah, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. More of a blunt person. Now, you know when you get some bad experiences doing something, you just don't want to like you're like that smell just puts me off now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's kind of what it is now. Somebody ruined it for you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> When are we going to see you in Guelph again? I don't know. Who wants to book me? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. yeah, I'll come out anytime, realistically. Yeah, we should make that happen. Yeah, we should definitely make that happen. Yeah, something popping, for sure. I mean, if Tech 9 was in Guelph, I'd probably be there. I know. <laughs> I know. I need to I need to get step my game up over here and get on those, you know, ten to twenty K bookings. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> no. I don't blame there. you for not. <laughs> we're we're still in the, you know, two to five, two to eight, something like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so proper. I mean you gotta come from somewhere. Then you know what? There's it's lower risk than that. Yeah, lower lower risk sometimes, but I don't know. I've done like three and four K ones and lost like you know two two K. So no, I know, but I'm just saying. Like, imagine you did friggin' fifteen and lost thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Like, you it, know what I mean. It would really crazy. Suck. Nice. It would really like, suck, and that can happen. Gaining two K and uh, when you wanted to gain four is okay instead of gaining two K when you wanted to gain fifteen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Big, yeah. big, big risks in the big shows, but Tech Nine's uh, one that you know you can pretty no, much bank on. He's good, yeah. Nah, he's solid. Yeah, it's, it's tough, man, because there's people that I would love to see. Like probably ninety nine percent of the artists that I would love to go see and buy tickets to are artists that if you put on and booked, you would lose your money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Like that's just being completely real with you because. Like Vinny Paz, I love listening to Vinny Paz. He does not sell. Um, who else can I think of? Uh, well, I love Crit, but Crit actually sold pretty good when he came to Toronto. He's getting out there though. Um, Were you at the uh, Push a T show? No, I was not. No, the Push and Fab show. I don't know what the turnout was for that, but yeah, they're one artist I kind of missed out on. No, I wasn't there for that. I actually, I'm a big Yellow Wolf fan. I don't know if you guys listen to the new uh, album. Yeah, yeah, I but, took it in. It's different, eh? It's really. Oh, uh, but yeah, I listened to it for like three months straight. But it's uh, it's it's quality. It's, he he it's makes good music. Dope. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like Yellow Wolf. Huh. I'm like, 
crazy. Different songs on different stations. Like I heard it was like country song on like a country station, and like oh I'm yeah, like yo, this guy's getting crossed on like all different genre stations because of this album. Yeah, it's crazy. Trying to get the album out there, and it's working. Yeah, it's it working. It's actually, it's it's really dope too because he's got a lot of culture, and at the same time, every track has a little influence of hip hop with an influence of something else. Some are more hip hop, some are more something else. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's so complete. But in a way, it's definitely. If you don't like it, you ain't gonna like it at all. Literally, when I first, the first day I listened to it, someone goes, "What do you think of the album?" I go, "It's pretty gay." <laughs> 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 and but that's just me. Like you know, I'm not. Just, I'm not actually hating. I'm just. That's my little uh, deflection of something that's different right off the bat. And I'm like, I got to take this in again. Yeah. <laughs> take yeah. it in again. Take it in again. By like the fifth time, I'm like, this album, sick. Like you know what I mean? It's just one of those. You, you got to learn to appreciate something, and that's something that people don't really do with things these days. But hey, man, I was freaking out about how cool the sky looked when we got into the radio station today. I just didn't get it. I think I saw it actually. To be honest with you, I was freaking I out. Shout out Molly G. Uh, a picture on Facebook of her posting about the sky. So that's obviously in Guelph, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. freaking. In, it's insane. It's insane. It looked like the sky was on fire, and it was just this this split up cloud pattern that just stretched across the whole sky, and the the sun was just lighting it up in this perfect way that like literally made the colors look so bright, so vibrant. Plus, you could see the blue still shining in from behind the clouds. It it. I was tripping out. I felt like I was on mushrooms while I was looking at it. I was like, this doesn't look like it should normally look. It was way too next level and I'm like this is, but i love that appreciation of just like looking at what what's around you and just being like wow yeah so that's one of those i would have had to uh sit outside and enjoy it with yeah. something in my hand and now now we're in the radio station though and i'm missing the whole thing it's gonna be nighttime by the time we get out yeah. Yeah. Death. <laughs> so, oh buddy it's nighttime but we have, we have a good time we get these interviews in man and uh is that where, where where's the station at it's in in the oh, university yeah. oh okay yeah, so and it's right. dark yeah, everywhere. Yeah, like we'll there's no see. windows. Yeah. We'll do we'll do some live things. Yeah, yes. we should definitely get you up here. Cipher it up. Yeah, for sure. Just uh just give me a little bit of advance notice cuz I got my little one to take care of, so I just got yeah, you know, yeah. some free time and I'm, all, I'm always good, man. I'm yeah, always down right. for this and I'm always trying to, you know, push the product and keep myself uh active with what I do, so Word up, word up. Well, people, check you out on the uh, the Tech Nine dates coming up. You're going to be around in the area. Uh, the the album is out. You can check it out on Bandcamp. You got the new project coming that should be out near the summer of next year. Um, yeah, man, getting it popping, yeah. man. You still you still dropping dropping the killer stuff. So we appreciate and it. Everything's where you keep on playing iTunes it. as well. So I mean, if you're you know one of those people that just I don't, I know a lot of people. I only do iTunes. Yeah, so on that digital to. Okay. Listen, I don't know about your damn iPod, but it's on iTunes, all right? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> iTunes. Yeah. iTunes. People ask, where's the music? iTunes. <laughs> yeah, man. And uh, check me on Twitter, at Zay's Music. Check me on uh, my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Zay's Music. YouTube's uh, channel is Zay's Music or Zay's TV. Or youtube.com slash Zay's Music, Zay's TV. Uh yeah, that's my Instagram, but, you know, my I don't even know why I throw my Instagram, because there's a lot of just pictures of me being, if, if you like seeing real stuff, like my child and things that I do in my life, it's at Dazer Blade. That's about it, because I'm not, I promote sometimes on my Instagram, but I do a lot more, the promotions in between the other stuff. So, yeah, if you want to get weird with me, go ahead. Uh, yeah, people like that. Four, four or five hundred people getting weird with me already, so it wouldn't be that uh, <laughs> <laughs> Word yeah. up, man! I'll get I'm you on a, there as I'm well. I'm great before. I'm a, I'm a honest and I'm an out there person. I don't I don't hide things and I keep things very real with everyone. And you know me, Robbie. We've had conversations in V. We've had few too, not as many, mm-hmm. Robbie. But you know, I'm just very uh, true to what I do and who I am. So I don't got no time. If you don't like who I am, it's all good. We can do our things in separate directions. Mm-hmm. And if you do. Let's collaborate in yeah. some form or fashion. You don't have to be an artist, you know what I mean? Make Life has many reasons for collaboration. <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, man. Speaking of collaborations, beg that verse head soon. <laughs> yeah, I will. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to uh, 
finish these last four tracks in my mixtape, like I was telling you, because I need to just keep in the mixtape mode, so like in a week or two, and then that's the first thing that comes in next. All right, bomb, bomb. So yeah, like bum, as long bum. as you can give me like three weeks, I know that's kind of a little bit, but hey, do your thing, bro. I waited a year. Do your thing. <laughs> do your thing. We'll make it happen. Uh, not for me. Don't get it wrong, people. I didn't make him wait a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We've just been, you know, slowly planning. If it's anything like, so it'll be good. Yeah, hopefully. To be honest with you, maybe I'll even get my uh, tape banged out like this weekend. <laughs> Let, let's have at it, man. We waiting. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I'm going to try to, like I said, I'll try to bang that out this weekend. Hold on to you. And then um, I'll get on that ASAP. But yeah, keep doing what you do, man. Respects. Yeah, you probably know you're putting on the scene for a lot of people, and you got a lot of people inspired to do things. And like, the city actually has a movement because of the things that you have done. So, salute, brother. Stuff, right? I appreciate it. Thank you. Gotta you. give a lot of respect for that because I remember you hollering at me like years ago, brother. <laughs> still hollering, still hollering. Yeah, no, trust me, man. It's all love, man. That's what it is. That's what we do. And V's the same way. V actually is a fantastic supporter. Shows nothing but love. And you know, you ever got a product or something to push? He's always there. So I got nothing but respect for that, and do the same for him. So thank you, thank you. Yes, Word, up. Word up. All right. Well, we'll let you get back to your daughter. It seems like she really wants your attention right now. <laughs> yeah, she's killing me right now. Pulling out board games and stuff. Back to bed. <laughs> All right, bro. All right, bro. Have a good night, boy. Easy. And we'll talk soon. All right. Peace. Peace. Pow, pow. That is Zay's. Zay's a blade on Instagram. Zay's music on all his links. Go and check him out. Show's almost done here, and I still got to try and sneak in. I was going to play one track off <laughs> one the, more, new, one the new album. Um, so, yeah, we don't, yeah, let's just, we'll go right to that because we got to play the uh, ads after that. This is pretty much it. This yeah, is us district, signing off this here. This Friday, come on out. I like you on the caps. I Let's love it. Let's get her done. I love it. Yes. Stay grounded. Comes out Friday 11th. On it. My man's on it. I just dropped a new music video today, too. It's called yep, Boom, Bap. Boom Bap. Shot it in Amsterdam. And dropping the vlog tomorrow. And then I got a new music video. Drop it on Friday with Reef the Lost <laughs> Cause and Nameless. On this. Boom. All right. This track right here is produced by Fresh Kills. It features a girl named Ava Silver from the Netherlands. I met her when I was out there this summer, and uh, she's got a dope voice. This track's called Not Showing Off. It's the last track, the final track on Stay Grounded. You can cop that on Friday. Word up. Check it out. And peace and love and much respects, y'all. Easy. This is music for the soul. Fresh kills. Robbie G. Uh, Era O. Oh. Fascination with my past and the actions to make it when the doors are closed It forces me to open pad and pages We got the instruments properly calibrated Melt watering and salivating Take a trip to Salvia and out of space Planetary alignment is shifting How to find my part to play in the grand design of the system Man tries to define its existence Smoking peace pipes Taking part in the tribal tradition Stay grounded That is my only mission Remember to appreciate the lessons given My head is risen to see the sun Look at what it took to make us and what we become Realizing that all we need is love So fresh, give me the drum So I can ride them like a magic carpet Travel past the stars, show my passion in the heart The sacred since the days of my incarceration Yeah, grown a lot, I didn't do it by myself All the praises go to God I'm not showing up.